Hey peeps, Tyler here with the recent reads at number 16. Books mentioned and timestamps will be in the description. I read Octopus, the Ocean's Intelligent Invertebrate via Hoopla. That was actually my last read of January. It's a nonfiction book about octopuses. Octopuses are fascinating creatures, and I just love animals. It was fun to learn different things about octopuses, and I give it four stars. It was a good book. Obviously, if you're not really into octopuses, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you are, so there's not a whole lot to say about that. In this beautifully photographed book, three leading marine biologists bring readers face to face with these amazingly complex animals that have fascinated scientists for decades. From the molluscan ancestry of today's octopus to its ingenious anatomy, amazing mating and predatory behaviors, and other worldly relatives, the authors take readers to the astounding life cycle, uncovering the details of distinctive octopus personalities. With personal narratives, underwater research, stunning close-up photography, and thoughtful guidance for keeping octopuses in captivity, Octopus is the first comprehensive natural history of the smart denizen of the sea. It's mostly just about octopuses in general. So, yeah. Don't know if I said I gave that four stars. I think I did. And then I read Victor Lavelle's Destroyer, also via Hoopla. The entire, like, six comic bind-up thing. It's, it's like a retelling of Frankenstein. The legacy of Frankenstein's monster collides with the socio-political tensions of the present-day United States. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein besieged his creator for love and companionship, but in 2017 the monster has long discarded any notions of peace or inclusion. He has become the destroyer, his only goal to eliminate the scourge of humanity from the planet. In this goal, he initially finds a willing partner in Dr. Baker, a descendant of the Frankenstein family who has lost her teenage son after an encounter with the police, while two scientists, Percy and Byron, Initially believe they're brought to protect Dr. Baker from the monster. They soon realize they may have to protect the world from the monster and Dr. Baker's wrath. I had read The Ballad of Black Tom by Victor Laval last year and loved it. And this was no exception. So I think he may become a favorite author. It was, in my opinion, an amazing retelling of Frankenstein. And you know, if you're not new here, <laughs> that I love Frankenstein. It has so much depth, social commentary, and thought-provoking stuff packed into it that I felt like I got whiplash from it, which might be my only con. Like, that's my only complaint. I wish there was a bit more to it, which in a way is that even a complaint. But it did feel like it tried to pack too much into, like, the space, like it needed to be fleshed out more. But I still loved it. Like, this is one to take your time with. Read not only the words, but also the pictures. I'll be thinking about it for a long time, and I might just have to buy my own copy because, like I said, I read it on Hoopla. I'm obsessed with Frankenstein, it's my favorite novel. So I generally hesitate to go into any retelling of it, worried I'll be let down. I wasn't let down, I just wish it was more fleshed out. Because it definitely was, like, too fast, in my opinion. But, like, I still ended up giving it five stars. If I wanted to be nitpicky, it would be, like, a four and a half, which is still awesome, so whatever. <laughs> also, via Hoopla, because I was in the process of moving, I just downloaded stuff. I read The Sun and Her Flowers by Rupi Kaur. 
I apologize if I'm butchering any names. I had read, I don't remember when, Milk and Honey, which I believe I gave four stars by her. So I really enjoyed that and I've been wanting to check out The Sun on Her Flowers. I finally got to it. I think I read Milk and Honey via Hoopla too, I don't remember. But it's a book of poetry. This one is divided into five chapters and illustrated by her. I think Milk and Honey was too. The Sun and Her Flowers is a journey of wilting, falling, rooting, rising, and blooming. A celebration of love in all its forms. Talking about growth and healing, ancestor and honoring one's roots. I don't know what that word means. Expatriation? And rising up to find a home within yourself. <gasps> I've found both poetry books to be emotional and honest and raw, heart wrenching. They both brought me to tears. I gave The Sun and Her Flowers four stars as well. So, really enjoy her poetry. And then via Scribd, I read The Pretty One on a Life, Pop Culture, Disability, and Other Reasons to Fall in Love with Me by Kia Brown. From the disability rights advocate and creator of the Disabled and Cute Viral Campaign, a thoughtful, inspiring, and charming collection of essays exploring what it means to be Black and disabled in a mostly able-bodied white America. Kia Brown loves herself, but that hadn't always been the case. Born with cerebral palsy, her greatest desire used to be normalcy and refuge from the steady stream of self-hate society strengthened inside her. But after years of introspection and reaching out to others in her community, she has reclaimed herself and changed her perspective. In The Pretty One, Brown gives a contemporary and relatable voice to the disabled, so often portrayed as mute, weak, or isolated. With clear, fresh, and lighthearted prose, these essays explore everything from her relationship with her able-bodied identical twins called The Pretty One by Friends, to navigating romance, her deep affinity for all things pop culture, and her disappointment with the media's distorted view of disability, and her declaration of self-love with a viral hashtag disabled and cute, by smashing stigmas, empowering her community, and celebrating herself, Teen Vogue, Brown and the Pretty One aims to expand a conversation about disability and inspire self-love for people of all backgrounds. This memoir essays by a black disabled woman with so much honesty, truth, and power in the pages. Honestly, I wish I knew how to describe it, but all I can say is the effect it had on me. An AFAB non-binary disabled person. I don't know what it's like to be black. I'm white. I learned a lot from this book from where I didn't relate personally, but also from where I did with being disabled, though with different medical issues. So I was born with the Factual Association, not cerebral palsy, so also disabled, but different, as well as the talk about depression and suicidal ideation, and that last part I've really been struggling with lately. It showed me that though I've already been working on having disability pride and unlearning internalized ableism as someone who has also been disabled my entire life and always will be, I still have a lot more to learn and unlearn. Some of it felt like a much needed punch to the gut. It wasn't easy to hear some of it, but I know I needed it. It was incredibly emotional for me, and some of it I'm just like, how do I get there? I'm still working on a lot of things, but life is a journey, and as long as I'm working on it, that's what matters. I'm also about the same age as her, just like a couple of years older, so some of the references to pop culture was a bit nostalgic for me. I need to make a list of books I read, loved, and don't own, and need to buy my own copy and put this on the list. One thing I wasn't expecting was I remember when I was a kid, I had actually had many thoughts like what ifs and imagine this and all my daydreams, I don't know what else to call them, 
because I know I have aphantasia, so like I don't visually see my daydreams, but I still daydream. It's just different. And in all of my thoughts and daydreams, it's like, what if I was able-bodied? Pretty sure that's internalized ableism. And one of them was also, what if I had an identical twin that was able-bodied? I don't think it's one I gave too much thought to, but it's one I did think about once in a while. That was actually her case. I don't have a twin at all. I just wondered what if, and if they were able-bodied, and I knew I would hate them with a passion growing up. So that was like unexpected to read about. That was actually her case. And she talks about how that came out in ways that weren't fair or okay, but like she's learning and all that and growing and it was just wonderful to see. And it just hit so many personal and emotional things for me. I don't know how to describe it. Obviously I gave it five stars. I think this one, along with How to Be Autistic by Charlotte, I think it's Charlotte. Yeah, Amelia Poe. I think How to Be Autistic and The Pretty One by Kia Brown. These two will definitely have to make it onto my favorites of the year list so far. And so far they're both nonfiction. I know it's February, but if they both aren't on my favorites of the year list, I'll be very confused. <gasps> it's another one of those books that I kind of wish everybody would read, even though I know that's not a thing. <gasps> and if I do end up getting my own copy. I'm gonna annotate the hell out of it. Huh. It was very difficult and emotional for me to get through because of how I related in different ways and internalized ableism is a bitch. So yeah. Then I listened to Monster She Wrote, The Women Who Pioneered Horror in Speculative Fiction by Lisa Kroger. I listened to it via Audible Plus. Weird fiction wouldn't exist without the women who created it. Meet the female authors who defied convention to craft some of literature's strangest tales and find out why their own stories are equally intriguing. Everyone knows about Mary Shelley, creator of Frankenstein, but have you heard of Margaret Cavendish, who wrote a science fiction epic 150 years earlier? Have you read The Psychological Hauntings of Violet Paget, who was openly involved in long-term romantic relationships with women in the Victorian era? Or the stories of Gertrude Barrows Bennett, whose writing influenced H.P. Lovecraft? Monster She Wrote shares the stories of women past and present who invented horror, speculative, and weird fiction and made it great. It was a good listen. It, I kind of wish I had read it with my eyes so I could have annotated it. But I did write down the authors that it mentioned. So like I have a list of women authors now to check out. So that's awesome. It was a good lesson. I gave it three stars. There was nothing really wrong with it. It's also my headspace. I think that affected it as well. As the fact I probably should have read it with my eyes. Like, I liked it. I'm glad to have a long list of women authors to check out now, so. And then the last one I'm going to talk about is 
Dream Date, the only one I have physically, by Sinclair Smith. Sweet dreams and rest in peace. Katie thinks she's met the perfect guy in her dreams. Then he starts making strange, threatening appearances in real life. And Katie finds herself in a waking nightmare and finding it harder and harder to distinguish between what's real and what isn't. This was actually somewhat of a difficult read for me. I enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. But there's a lot of red flags and illusions, if that's the right word, to domestic abuse. But what I loved so much about this particular story is Katie realizes that none of this is okay. That it's abuse, that it's not okay, that it's fucked up. And I really enjoyed this story so very much. Wanted to kill Heath. And yeah, it's a point horror book from 1993. So, don't know what else to say about that one. Those are the books for this recent reads. Let me know what you've read recently or what are you reading or what are you doing if you're not reading. Have you read any of these? Let me know your thoughts down below. I am currently not reading. I've been playing The Sims 3 for like the past just a couple of days. So I think I'm gonna be doing that for a while. I don't know, maybe other things. Just gonna see what happens. Because my mind is not wanting to read right now and that's okay. And as I've said before, if I don't read, I can still make videos about other things. So I do also have a Tumblr where I post my some stuff, so I'll try to remember to link that in the description as well. And also have a new blog, which I mentioned in a quick video recently. So, a new WordPress blog, that's also in the description. So, yes. like comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to be notified of when I post new videos, whatever you want to do, no pressure. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.